Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the main 2018 Bible Institute Seminar. What a great occasion it was, and we recorded part of it so that you could enjoy the instruction and renew your spirit. We appreciate uh, everyone who is working, but most of all, we want to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to continue to bless these seminars and all who put their hands to work. Lord Jesus Christ, we put this seminar in your hands that someone who sees it and hears it can be uplifted, can be encouraged. Oh, Lord, these blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we welcome you to the 2018 Bible Institute Seminar. And it was held on the 25th of March. And what an occasion it was. And we commend our Dean, Dean Charles Wright. But we never want to forget those pioneers who went before us, Bishop Lawson, Bishop Bonner, and all those who made a way for us to have such a great, great institution. We are charged Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And so we know the Lord is with us. He has blessed the Church of Christ Bible Institute since 1927. And this year's speakers, uh, there were four presenters who come before you. Uh, first, Dean Charles Wright. And then uh, Dean William Moore, we don't have the filmed uh, lecture, but we have his major points. And then there's Mother Dorothy Anderson, a professor of missions and known all over the world as the mother of the Car Caribbean. And uh, then we, uh, yours truly, will talk about prophecy. So to begin, let us uh, start with Dean Charles Wright. And he's, his main scriptures, you might go and get them, were found in 2 Timothy 3 and 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to pa parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, Fierce despisers of those that are good. It goes on. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, we are commanded to turn away. And then uh, Dean Moore gave us of focus on the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he took Luke 21, 25, and there should be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear uh, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great joy. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Then Mother Anderson uh, will speak to us uh, from First Thessalonians. You are all children of light. And children of the day, we are all not of the night nor darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. And then yours truly will come to you focusing on all of the uh, many things that are happening right now in the world that point to uh, the end days. These are the uh, last days of time, and we're the last group, I think, of God's anointed workers to bring in souls. And we are pointed out, Matthew 24, 
where Jesus was asked when these things shall be. And of course, he gave the signs of the end. So let us now go to our seminar at Greater Refuge Temple, uh, the beautiful social hall there. And it, it, it shows there's something going on on the inside. These things came into, into being, and they reflect the society that was anti-establishment also, right? And anyhow, that's another thing. But all these things, I think, are a part of the spirit of the age. You say something about the, about the person, and the more you know the spirit of the age and the every draw of a certain uh, currents in society, the more you can stay clear of the deceptions of the devil, right? So, in the church growth movement, they tell you that it doesn't matter too much. Uh, get a church that's easy, seeker friendly, easy, uh, user friendly. As we talk about user friendly um, um, gadgets, you watch those labels, user friendly. They are difficult. But they try to say in so many words, don't make it so problematic for a person to come to your church. Well, God has standards. God has standards for holiness. And um, Peter talks about it. Here I go with another scripture. But don't the scriptures mean something? Someone asked me a question. Do we have to have a scripture for everything? Well, it might not be directly quoted the scripture, but the sense of the scriptures must agree with what we do. Right? It's the sense of what God said that is expressed in the scriptures. If we can't find our location in the scriptures, where can we find it? Right? If God didn't say it, how can you enforce it? I have no authority myself. Any authority I have, it comes from God's word. Any authority as a minister, preacher, teacher, it's because of God's word. I have no authority. It is the church of Jesus Christ. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew 16 and 18, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It will fight, but it will not win. But the authority for the church and for everybody in the church comes from God Almighty, right? He is the Lord. He is the God of this world. He speaks and everybody should listen to him. And I believe that. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me, there is no Savior. Hallelujah. No God. Hallelujah. And who can proclaim as I do? Then let him declare it and set it in order for me. Since I appointed the ancient people and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show these to them. Do not fear nor be afraid. Have I not told you from the time from that time and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Indeed, there is no other rock. I know not one. Let God arise, his enemies be scattered. Let God arise.
and I am last. Besides me, there is no God. So we're going to let God arise. Just let him have his way. We've been eating for the second time. I don't know when I've had this much food so close together. And you know you don't do too much talking when your stomach is full. But the Lord is here. He's going to speak. Glory be to God. I am his and he is my savior. Oh, hallelujah. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. So we now are serving, glory, are enjoying the, the, the spirit of the living God, only one God. Glory. And who is that God? God manifested in the flesh, Jesus, one God. And we're so glad, I'm so glad, is to see you all and we meet again for one more time. Yes. I remember when, and I'm going back to my, my topic, my mom told me when the Lord has been with you from the very beginning, before you even landed in, in the world, he was with you, took care of you. And I want to give him glory even now, I thank you. With me, let's praise him, will you? Hallelujah! Now from that time on, glory, I've been trying to devote my life to God, sincerely, glory. After I got married, my husband said, "What happened to you? You, 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 you're so quiet. You're not. We want. I want to take you out. I want people to see my wife. You know, and all that kind of thing." He's talking to me deep in my spirit. I says, "I can't. I owe God too much. I have to give him my life, and that's been my life ever since trying." So, if some of you see my Anderson kind of offish. It's just that I'm being who I am. A miracle from the Lord. Thank God. And I just had to share that with you. In Jesus. Now why? I don't know. But once in a month, see, clear y'all. One thing I do know, that for everything, whatever the Lord does, there's a reason for it. So if the Lord said, tell that story briefly, glory then somebody in here needed to hear that story. So whoever, the Lord is, can take care of a situation that's totally beyond your control, he can take it over and fix it, bring it into focus, peace of blood. In Jesus' name, one more time, praise him, hallelujah. Yes, yes. <laughs> now all these papers falling out. I have read, if a speech well prepared, but if it's misunderstood and you don't understand it, then it's to no avail. The person doesn't get that much when he doesn't, now she doesn't know or understood destroy the church. And he's doing everything he, he can to stop us. Every one of you, glory, just raise your right hand before the Lord to let Satan know I'm determined to go through. I'm determined. Glory, oh, yes, Lord. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So, as long as you can praise him and believe him, we've got it made. So don't let the enemy push us in a corner and to, to starve us, as it were, of spiritual values because we're scared to release ourselves. No. Hold on. Yes, we're going to have a cross. He's going to put troubles on you. Things are going to happen that you never expected to happen. 
people are going to deceive you. You, you should never dream that person would turn up in this glory. But it all has come to pass. But Jesus is pretty alerting us in this hill. Watchful. Watchful. Be watchful. And don't take hold to everybody and everything and say the Lord sent them. Amen. Amen. Watch and pray. That's Before right. you are, uh, what? submit yourself to any deed or person, know who you are dealing with. Find out from the Lord, did you send this individual to me? And the Holy Ghost will speak. The Spirit of the living God will speak to let you know that is not of me. So when you're in a situation and all of a sudden your spirit begins to wax. I don't feel comfortable around him or her anymore. So I'm going to back off. You know, I'm not going to be... Then don't say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. If the Lord says separate yourself, separate yourself. If the Lord says befriend them, befriend them. But watchfulness, watch and pray. We are living in a very dangerous time now. And as the song said, true love is hard to find. It's hard to find true love. People will say they love you until the time comes. The testing time. Get sick and stay sick for, two, for three months, a, a year, and see how much friendship gonna last. But that's all right, hold on. I want to watchfulness and hold it on. Be strong in the Lord. Just know these are the last days. If Bishop Lawson said, Daddy, yeah, thank God, you, you, you thank the Lord that he's letting you live to see the last of the last days. Be strong in the Lord. Hold on. Our God is able. And our God, he's in full control. Full control. Not just a little bit, but he's in full control. So be encouraged. Stand tall. If you're leaning over because of disgust or uh, disappointment, stand up. Hold your head up and walk on for Jesus. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Lord. Let's go back to this. You know, I tell you, I'm this kind of person. Whenever the Holy Spirit interrupt, I said, have your way, Lord. Have your way. Spiritual qualities, uh, sacred matters, then watchfulness. Watching or observing some someone or something closely, alert and vigilant. You're not weak. We have a God and a strength that can hold us up and take us through any kind of situation. God can deliver you. He then let that enjoined. Enjoined is to instruct or urge someone to do something, something, voice for, or a command. What has the Holy Spirit commanded you or instructed you to do, and are we doing that? How far are we off course? Or how close are we to the mark? This it's a school, it's an academic setting, and yet the Lord is sitting here, his, his spirit is here, Lord, to see how each one, each individual, glory, is accepting or rejecting what he has sent for. How do you feel about your spiritual life and the things that you're doing, glory? How do you really feel tonight? Sitting here, how do you feel? How closely do you feel you are to the Lord and to his divine will concerning you personally? <laughs> Think about it. Watchfulness, alert. Alert. Turn the searchlight on your own stuff now. We are praying for others. We are trying to be kind and helpful. 
But the, when the bottom line really comes down, down before it, the word of the Lord said to do what? Save yourself. Be sure you are living, glory, or striving to live according to the word of God. Glory. You, in the end, you, we cannot give an excuse for nobody. Got to stand and face the judgment. Face him by yourself. Amen? So before you leave this room or this setting, we want you to act to say to the Lord, honestly, Lord, I failed you. I, I didn't say that like I should have. I didn't act like I should have. I didn't give like I should have or what you told me to give. I didn't do that, Lord. Let's be honest with him so that he can turn this sheet over and you can start again, fresh, in the name of Jesus. All right, let's go on. This is the way I'm led. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 5 to 6. We shall read. But concerning the times, I'm starting at the first verse, chapter 5, verse starting, verse 1. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I shall write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, and as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Wherever, therefore, rather, therefore, no, let let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober for those who sleep, who sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Watch. And pray. And with our attention here, through in this particular verses, sentences, the coming of the Lord now. We don't want to be caught unaware. What the Lord has given us, we're going to hold forth, work at it. There will come hindrances and people and things to try to discourage you. People on your job and they will, the supervisor sometimes can be very, very mean and, and for no reason at all. But here they're picking on you. But that's all right, hallelujah. Because when things get too hard, what do we do? We go to where? Tell God about it. In the name of Jesus. But today we're not children of the night. We are not children who don't understand. We don't know, like someone said to me, well, Mother Anderson, you all keep talking about the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lord. That, I heard my grandmother saying that, the coming of the Lord. And she, he said, all these years, and nobody has come yet. 
I said, well, you better hush your mouth because he may come right this minute. Any minute now, while we're, and according to the word of God, hallelujah, somebody's going to be left here in this generation to see the rapture take place. Somebody, glory. How, what would happen if all of a sudden we hear a strange sound, a horn blowing, and the hallelujah, and then you look up and say, well, what's going on? That's so strange. You look up and see Jesus on the clouds. Oh Lord, that will be the day. Amen. Well, look for him just like that. Don't put it off. Well, he didn't come yet, and he didn't do so. I'm, I am going to see my grandchildren grow up. We're not thinking about seeing the grandchildren. We just want to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. Hold fast to the, because we are children of the day. We are children of righteousness. You are trying to live holy. We are trying to do what the Lord say. Glory. The word of God, every word of God is so precious to us. Glory. And we respect it. Children of the day. Children of the night couldn't care less. They're saying, I don't believe nothing like that's going to happen. One person said, ask me too. We were driving in the bus going... And he said, I said, oh, look at the beautiful clouds. And we were uh, uh, going down the mountain and the trees green. And it was so pretty. I said, what a beautiful sight. I said, God is, God is a wonder. He said, miss, God is not no wonder here. He said, this is just nature. I said, come on now. Well, who made nature? Where did nature come from? Well, give God the end of the beginning. Oh, we, we Someone asked me, well, where was God when he said, let there be? I said, I'm not trying to ask where he was, answer where he was. I know he is right now. I know he is. So I'm not trying to wonder and, and drive myself crazy trying to figure where he What was he standing on when he said, let there be? I said, he was just standing on his own side. <laughs> by myself and I don't have to put my hand to do nothing all I gotta do is say is speak the word the son came in existence because he spoke the word let there be and that's what he's doing that's what he's doing in your life in my life right now speaking the word and nothing is gonna stop you hallelujah because God has called you forward and the Lord said, get up and go, get up and go. Hallelujah. Even though your flesh, the old man may tell you, you're too sick, or you're too this, or you need, she needs you, or this and that and other. Said, thank God, the Lord, into thine hand. I commit to you. Learn to commit things into his hand. Then commit it into God's hand. Who is the Holy Ghost talking to right now? You need to turn it loose. Turn that thing loose. Give it to the Lord in prayer. And if he said, you, if you want, you say, well, I don't know how. What do you mean? I don't know how. Give it to the Lord in prayer. In other words, he said, you give him thanks. Thanks means acceptance. Acceptance. If you thank him, you may say, Sister Velasquez, I need a, uh, say, I need coffee to go, go home. Glory. And you said, well, uh, Mother Anderson, let me go get my pocketbook and I'll give you the five dollars, whatever it takes to go home. All right? But you didn't come back right then. I'm not going to give up on you because I have your promise knowing you're going to let me have the five dollars. Then another incident. Glory. I like to share these because I think, I believe the Lord is definitely talking to some of us in the audience. That's why you're here. They had the blackout about, what, 30 years ago? The first one, long time. The whole city, no lights, everything stopped. Total confusion. My husband had put, with his friends, during the day, decided to go hunting. He was a great hunter and fisherman. All right. They got out in Jersey, and late that night, he heard over the, the radio that the, the place had gone completely dark. We were, with Mother Perry and the other missionaries, 
we were upstairs in the missionary business meeting. I had told my husband, I'll be to the business meeting and I'll come home. May the Lord bless you all with your hunting. And I went on, not knowing the disaster that would take place. When my husband heard that the, all the lights were out, they couldn't run the subways, but he said, guys, I gotta go home. And they said, but we just got here. They're, they're gonna take, he said, uh, look, I gotta go home. He said, I gotta go get my wife. You listen to this. I gotta go and get my wife. He's, cause he said, my wife is at the church and I'm sure the church is dark. Bishop Bonner had him candles put across the altar so that we could see glory how to and, and those who had cars rather he said you get your car and you take how many are going to the Bronx how many are going to Staten Island how many are going and he said hey, y'all share your cars we had the candles it was dark the people all around came Bang, 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 bang. Let us in, let us in. They wanted to get in the church. Those people who had been in the club, right on the corner at that time, were having a big time, they called it. But they ran from the, from the club to the house, the church, and ran on the outer church door. Let us in, let us in. And Bishop Honor said, don't open the door. He said, uh, it'll be total danger in here. Stampy. He said, just pray, just tell, tell the Lord, take care of the situation, Lord, it's all in your hand, it's all in your hand. Let a few hours later, here came my husband. He said, I have to go, I'm leaving you all, for my wife is in trouble, you gotta get home. Now, when he got to the church door, he had this great big flashlight. You know, these long eight cylinders or whatever. But I know it could cast light so many feet ahead of her. When he got to the church, all these people were standing, waiting, wanting to get in. Bishop said, to them, don't open the door, don't open the door. The door is closed, keep it closed. When my husband came, he took that, whole, that great big flashlight and shined it in. He said, I'm Dorothy Anderson, Mother Anderson's husband. And he shined that light in. <laughs> when, my, when Bishop Barna heard that and saw this light come through, he told some of the deacons, you could go open the door for her, but nobody else. Let him in. Because he had the light to identify and the name. Glory. He didn't say, this is Susie McGoofle. <laughs> He said, Mother and Dorothy Anderson, my wife. He had my, his name was stamped in my, my you know, with me, my person, so that the connections, glory, glory, open the door, let him in, but nobody else, glory. So why, I, I'm not the, just, the, put in things that the Lord is putting in my mouth right now. Who in here, glory? is in a predicament right now. And you need, and I'm going to go on down the line, it's nothing like your husband and wife or your children that's close and dear to you. They are precious, see? So you want them with you. When trouble comes, you want them around. Come with me. Be there for me, okay? This is why I feel that in this audience, somebody got a situation and you don't know how to deal with it. According to the lesson that's coming forth, give it to the Lord right now. Raise your right hand and give it to the Lord. He's at you. He's able. He's able. He, yeah, yeah. And whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive it. Let's go on. And I'm going to be finished. You are the children of life and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Don't lose your position from where you are. 
Don't let nobody make you so discouraged and so angry, glory, that you feel like walking away. Say, well, I had all I can take of this foolishness. I'm gone. Be still, children of the light, glory. Be still and see God work in your behalf. I know he can work in your behalf. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Let us watch and be sober. Watch and be sober. Don't take Satan for granted. Satan will never be our friend. You understand? Don't ever think. And he can deceive us and watch that. That's why he says to watch. Because if we close our eyes and start looking too much in the mirror, in the at material things, we'll lose sight on God. And you can't lose sight on God, but so long, you're going to start feeling weak. You're going to start feeling, I don't want to go to church this morning. Well, I promised so-and-so I was going to go shopping with her. Putting Jesus a little bit aside. But watch. Be alert. Ask God, glory. What does this person mean for, to come into my life. What does she mean? What does he mean? Why me? Why me? They didn't know me, but the, watch because the enemy will send some demonic force to make it look just like that's what you have waited for and prayed for for so long. And it's just of the devil. Yeah. Watch. Be alert. In the name of Jesus. And watch out for day and listen. Don't don't just say like you say. I know the Lord's gonna take care of me. I don't have to worry about nothing. I can walk out here at midnight by myself with my blindfold and no. And you gotta watch and pray. Watch. Be alert. And once here I go again. One night I was coming from church. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my spirit and said, when you get to the light of the corner before crossing you, now there was a big baby store and it was all lit up. The voice told me that when you get to the store, don't, go, said, don't run, but just walk fast, cross the street. And I did just what it said. I, when I got to the light of the baby store, I crossed the street in a hurry. And he said, now look back. When I look back, there was a man standing right there. And he had followed me all the way from this subway, but he did have on sneakers and I couldn't hear him. Watch, don't get so caught up in life. And, 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 and I won't say faith, because we can never be caught up in faith. If you can believe, you can believe your way out of anything. Faith will bring you through. There's a sentence there to be held. Faith will bring you through. You may be down now, but believe your way out of it. Thank him anyhow. I think somebody should give him a bit. Don't you need it. Give him a bit. Thank you. Lord. Tears may be leaping under your throat, but if it came from you, the Holy Ghost will let you know. The Holy Spirit will let you know this is me speaking. This is God. You don't have to be afraid. All right? Like the angel told Joseph, you don't take Mary, your wife. Here, go ahead. Glory. You don't have to sit in fear and be afraid and wondering how am I going to get out of this? Just into thine hand, Lord, Psalm 31, verse 5. Into thine hand, Lord, I commit my spirit. I commit this thing. I can't handle it, but you can. In the name of Jesus. And then you tell him, thank you. Yeah, you can pray for God loves you. God you. The problem is going on now, and getting out of it. Watch out for these, uh, what? False prophets. That's another danger. Everybody got a vision. Everybody got a song. Everybody got a what? 
but nobody have Jesus and telling you you got to be buried in his name and receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. But everybody telling him I got a good book and the Lord give me to send me $25 in the book. And, and here we go take your little telephone money and send it to get that book and then that, that preacher, well, I've got all kind of diamond rings and fur coats and Watch and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watchful. Watch. He's alerting the church. He's alerting the church. I'm having a dream here in the the last, night before last. And in that dream, I woke up and I, and looked at, and I pulled my shoes off and take off your shoes. When I took my shoes off, that my shoes are white and like a, a white, my feet rather, up to the ankle, but white, but just white. And, and I said, what's going on here? I said, don't worry, don't worry. In other words, I don't know what's going on and maybe y'all can interpret it for me, but I'm just telling you. Watch and pray. Watch these false prophets. <coughs> Everybody wants a dime now. They don't want to work to get it, so they're going to make up some pretty scheme and get your dime. They want your money. Be careful, watch and pray. Watchful in Jesus' name. Watchful in Jesus' name. Everybody is not, everybody that say, Lord, Lord, is not a God. Amen. Everybody that jump up and shout is not a God. Amen. 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 And my mother used to say, every gold, to every teeth that look pretty and shiny is not gold in your mouth. So listen, watch and pray. Make a determination from this uh, meeting on. Lord, help me to be more watchful unto prayer. And help me to pray before I died in and started. I almost drowned because I thought I could swim. And I was a little girl. And I, right now, I couldn't, you couldn't pay me to go in water. <laughs> <laughs> almost drowned. I'm out there cutting up in the thing and putting my foot down. And I thought I was going to make the, uh, the uh, <laughs> hit the bottom of the wood lake. And I went down so fast it almost knocked the wind out of me. I couldn't breathe. And I'm just, and my uncle, they all saw me. They said, look at Dorothy climbing in the water. <laughs> and I'm drowning. <laughs> but let me tell you the end of it. I, just as I was about to open my mouth, because I couldn't hold my breath no longer, in two couple of minutes or so, I couldn't hold my breath. So just as I was getting ready to open my mouth, little bit, a big hand hit under the bottom of my foot came and, and pushed me to surface. And when I opened my mouth, instead of water, it was air. God is a he'll take care of it. But he wants you to be watchful, see him, and stay in the light. And then and then he tell you, not it's just to stay in it, but later, I think it's uh, John 17, he said, now you are the light of the world. The world is watching us. Stand firm, stay clean, dress wholesome. We are not the clown in hallelujah, in Jesus' name. May the Lord continue to bless you, keep you, and if, if, he, if he doesn't come to rapture the church, I hope to see you in the same place, same time, next year. Start with that. My mother taught me, that's not the type of person you want to be around. We all know that the Holy Ghost speaks to our hearts. We have an unction. We have a discernment. We know, as has been said by Deacon Moore, uh, Mother Anderson and all, we know. And I don't care if you don't have and got out of the third grade. God lets his people know. And even after you fool old Bob here, God will tap him on the shoulder 
and tell me what to do. There are many, we are living in an age of a lying culture. People will lie. It used to be a time we used to look down on the floor and lie. Now they look you dead in the eye. We had a preacher around here one time. I don't want to know, I don't mention names, but he, 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 he she, the sister got so annoyed, she said, and my mother always had a great sense of humor. And this sister said, he is an ungodly liar. He's an ungodly liar. My mother with her humor said, well, what other kind of liar is this? <laughs> but an ungodly liar. The Sanderson talked about how she thought she could swim. Go sit there, I thought I could ride my bicycle with no hands. <laughs> Show my father that I could ride, but I'm holding the handlebar and a big rock hit the wheel and I went one way and the bicycle went with a dog. But I also heard a story about the man that came behind her and uh, there was a woman, uh, there was a mugging going on through this parkway in Chicago and her father was a missionary in Africa along with 52 other missionaries. And uh, the way to go to work, she had to cut through this park or she would have been late. And she knew it was dangerous. And sure enough, as uh, she went to go to work, this man came behind her and came up on her. And all of a sudden, he stopped and he looked at her and he ran away. He came within about 30 feet Amen. and he ran away. So she saw his face and when they uh, got to the police station, she had to identify him, and she identified him, and he came back to her, and he said, and she said, well, how, how, why didn't you not attack me? He said, miss, when I saw you, there were 52 people around you, 52 angels, sent over from Africa by prayer. And I don't think you realize we all are living on the prayers of somebody. Yeah. This institution is a beautiful and wonderful temple, but it's built on prayer. Yeah. My mother told me about Mother Hayden and Mother, all the other mothers who were here. And Bishop Wright and I have been talking because God willing, if the Lord lets me live, it will be, a, uh, it'll be the 100th birthday of the Greater Refuge Temple. And very quickly, before we go on, I'm doing tributes as a historian. You know, some people when they leave, and you do have to think about what you will leave, not what you have. Are you with me? Some people leave lands and cattle. I want to leave some teachings and some lessons about people. Oh God. Yes. And I have a, a, a little demonstration here because you saw me filming Sister Anderson. But we want to use YouTube. Now I want you to write down YouTube. And there are a couple of things in YouTube that we won't have time to cover today in prophecy, but they're on there. Yes. Talk about Bishop Lawson. I talk about no. So you go to YouTube first. Yes. Then you type in Dr. Robert Spellman. Yes. And then you go down the line. And you will see uh, the prophetic future by Bishop R.C. Lawson. I'm going to show you that, uh, not the whole thing. I'm just going to show you. Uh, and Sister Soros gave me the uh, CD, and I made it into a DVD. Now, what, what about a DVD? I used to sit, and you know, Bishop Wright and I, sometimes we teach at the convention, sometimes we wouldn't. And God can make a way, he made a way through YouTube. If anyone in the world, and I looked at it, the last time on Bishop Lawson's tape that I did, I think it was up to 10,000 already people who have viewed Bishop Lawson. That's worldwide. And God has given us a technology that you can type into your computers on YouTube and get this. Now, what do I want to do for the uh, centennial? I want to pay tribute to people, journeys, 
like Mother Darth Anderson. Mother Orway, Mother Bessie Jones. Mother Keenan over there, you don't know what she's been through. And I want to show that in the sense of what they contributed that would be passed on to the next generation. Are you all with me? And so I have a demonstration. I did one for Mother uh, Maggie Frazier, who was a great prayer warrior that died on Christmas Day this year. And I wonder if you could play that, Rob. It's six minutes. But it talks about her Anderson, and hers will come up. <laughs> or Mother, An Mother uh, Frazier's will come up. Mother Carrie F. Lawson will come up. Mother Betsy Jones will come up. Y'all with me? And the generation that follows us, nobody can erase this. You, they can go on and you can get the facts and learn from the people of God. It's what we leave you see, young people particularly need to understand this. I'm just as motivated, I'm supposed to be an old man, but I feel like a 20-year-old. Because I've been mentored by spiritually wealthy people. You can talk about Rockefeller. You can talk about Trump. They're not like the spiritually wealthy people of God. Amen. And when you sit next and talk with Sister Anderson, and you talk with some of the great spiritual giants of our time, you got to know you're around the spiritually wealthy. Mother Anderson, I wish I had time just to talk about her. We've been in Trinidad. Been one time it was so hot, all the people were falling out in the airport. But the saints, none of the saints fell out. We're going over, amen, to, uh, uh, what's that island over there? To Tobago. And then we've been in England. And we've been in the Holy Land. And we've been in so many places uh, as, as an adventure. Following Bishop Bonner had been an adventure. Wait till you see when we get finished with all the things about Bishop Bonner, and of course Bishop Lawson. And Bishop Bonner was a genius man, and I was fortunate. I've been around people of God who have enriched me, who have stimulated me, and therefore I feel like an empty picture before a full fountain. God just keeps pouring it in. And I'm thankful for people like yourself who have come. Can we go to this uh, three-page handout very quickly? If we could have a little more light, and then we'll go with the slides. Uh, because I, you know, a lot of people, and Mother Carrie Lawson, uh, my mother asked her one time, said, how long do you have to pray? And Mother Lawson said, you pray through till you feel free. <laughs> See, sometimes it's a minute, and sometimes it's two hours. But then I've been trying to teach the saints. The Bible says, and that scripture was uh, quoted this morning, that pray without ceasing, and in all things give thanks. And you say, well, I gotta take time out, take a shower, I gotta take time out, start my car, I gotta start. And you know all the excuses. But when you pray all day, and your mind's on God. The scripture said, Thou will keep in perfect peace. Yeah. Whose mind is yeah. stayed on me. Yeah. All you get uh, stones and you're getting all kinds of bills and things thrown at you. Think about Stephen. Amen. He looked up and he saw the Lord Jesus Christ. And none of those stones affected him. Yeah. Because he had his mind on God. <laughs> so what I've done these two columns here. If you and I'm, I'm trying to show the saints that you don't have to be great memory people, but if you begin to memorize certain prayers, Lord, take me through this day. Lord, I thank you for loving me when I wasn't even, I was spiritually dead. And you start to memorize these short prayers, they will flow up in you, and you'll be praying all day. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And uh, you can duplicate this and pass it out to everybody you can see because people are telling me, said, please send me the, the, the short press because it helps people so much. 
And basically on the left side, they're praying, Lord, in your name, I praise you. Never give a damn set, praise your way out, pray your way out. And you can get your way out. Lord, help me to make it through this difficult day. I'm just hitting them sporadically. Are you with me? Yeah. Lord, strengthen and use your, anoint, your anointing in my life. I'm just hitting and missing here. Lord, help me to be consistent in all my labor and duties. But then the scripture said, and in all things, give thanks. And on the right side, you see a whole list of thank yous. Bishop Lawson talked about how the Lord sent the angel out with two baskets, two angels, and one had to go get, get, the, get, get the thank yous, and one had to get the request. And the one with the request come could hardly hold it up. It was so filled up. And then the one with thanks, just a few little smattering. Amen. You need to thank God. The key to your, uh, your prayer is thanking him before you even, he even answers. Because he's going to answer before you call out answer. And while you're yet speaking, I will hear. And you can't get it any better than that. When, you, when it's already, you know it's, it's up ahead. Hallelujah. And the scriptures say, wait for it. So I thank you for knowing my flaws and keeping me Despite of me, are y'all with me? Yes. And you start committing yourself to these short prayers. Watch them flow up in you. I'm on another one now. I'm dealing with short sermons. Lord, everybody likes that. <laughs> Two word sermons. <laughs> amen. Yesterday, amen. Trump, he did this and he did that. Two words, but God. <laughs> Who is rich in mercy. Wherewith he loved us. Hallelujah. And Bishop Morrell, we were here at an alumni meeting one time, and he spoke, God know. No matter what I go through, God know. I don't care how that supervisor on the job teaches me, God know. God knows what I go through. We need to get some of those short sermons in our heart knowing but God. I don't care what Trump is. But God. Hallelujah. All right, page two, quickly. This one, I came here one night, Mr. Clark, this is several years ago. Mr. Clark saw something, wrote down on a napkin, a prayer wheel he had seen. And that meant so much to me, I took it home and I made a, a graphic out of it. And sometimes when you pray, it's saying, you got to pray like you're going around the clock. Are y'all with me? Amen. See, the reason why we, have, we don't get what we want, because we haven't forgiven. We haven't cleaned ourselves out. Are y'all with me? Yes. So, and then I was in Jerusalem one time, and we went to pray, and I said, Lord Jesus, Christ, and said, Mother Bessie Jones, you don't enter the Lord's presence like that. <laughs> You enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with prayer. And what? And be thankful unto him. And do what? And bless his name. Psalm 34. And what I will bless the Lord, not just once a week, not just twice a week, not just when I go to church, at all times, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody paid me the greatest compliment one time. I said, you give God credit for everything. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. He did it all. Hallelujah. And so when you go around this wheel, I want you to take some time to get home. You go around this wheel and you, you repent. Somebody said, well, I, 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 I'm not that. You don't know that you haven't offended someone. Uh, then you search for your cleansing. Sometimes the Lord can show you things down on the floor. Mr. Bond taught me that. You, God can show you, you can, you can hear and see God from the floor. <laughs> and when you go into that kneeling prayer and then you praise his name and you thank him for salvation. Where would
would we be? I don't care what Trump has and how many hotels he owns. I don't think there's anybody in here who would trade the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. He came. He didn't have to come. And he suffered and he died. And before the foundation of the world, Scripture says, we were yet sinners. Hallelujah. We got here sinners. And we lived on the mercy and grace of God. See, a lot of us think, you know, oh, I've been saved for some years. I thank God for the years that I wasn't saved and he kept me with the grace and goodness. Everybody come with grace and goodness and mercy. I don't care who you are. And God will give you grace. And we are saved by faith. Why? Through grace. It is not about self. It is a gift of God. Those you need to pray for people who don't pray. And I have a secret, and that God blesses me because I pray for people other than myself. <laughs> when you pray for somebody other than yourself, God sees you. Hallelujah. Pray for those who won't even pray over their meal. We got them in our houses. We tried, and we're still trying. And that the Lord's will be done in our life. You didn't come here to spec be a spectator. You did not come here by chance. Amen. I called you by name, the Bible said. I'm going to preach on that tomorrow. And I can't even wait to get in the pulpit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Who are we? In God. <laughs> See, you better know who you are. You are more than conquerors. You are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. And so, our own special request. God give you time. You need a car. You want a car. You can ask for a car. God will give you what you want. And there's a place in your prayer for that. But that's not the only praise. And when you call God, it shouldn't always be a request. You know, sometimes people call you up and tell you what they want, and then they, they don't even want to hear from you. Slam your phone down. <laughs> and this takes time. It's called meditation. To listen to God. I want to tell you something. I want to speak to your heart. I may not speak to your ears. You see, we see with our eyes physically, but we see with our faith spiritually. We hear with our ears physically, but we hear with our heart spiritually. Are y'all with me? Yes. And then you also be, you say, you should be praying for souls to be saved. And Sister Anderson said, I believe we're the last God. Yes. God is depending on us, the last group to bring in as many souls as we can. Because these are the last days. The signs were put up for us in the scriptures. If you go into Chicago, you'll see. It. Amen. Chicago, 300. Then you'll see another sign, Chicago, 200. And we know that these are the end times. We're to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They say the capital of Jerusalem, it is the capital. We are citizens of Jerusalem. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Because we are citizens of God. And that is his headquarters. Amen. We ought to rebuke the devil. Because yeah. he's going to try to come in your prayer. But when you start praising God. Amen. I, I preached to someone one time, you know, how to punch the devil back. <laughs> you know, we always start turning the other cheek. When the devil hits you in the head, you hit him back with a praise. He's going to get it out of your way. And then, uh, so you rebuke that adventure, you ask for forgiveness, you meditate, you thank and praise him, and we've been around the clock. Isn't that something? Amen. Last but not least, on the prayer lesson, then we go to the prophecy. Here's a chart. I don't know much. But God shows me like he shows you. There are answers to every prayer. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now look at that last chart. 
Sometimes it's yes, all we look at. Lord, give me a husband. Lord, give me a wife. Lord, give me a house. Lord, give me a car. Oh, I tell you. Everybody loves that one. And he said, whatsoever we ask, believe it. If thou art hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, Deuteronomy 28, blessed shall thou be. Are you all with me? And then another yes is, is yes, but not the appointed time for that blessing. Are you with me? There are times you will want something, but God got it on a timetable. Then you're not ready for it until a certain time in your life. But the answer is yes. And uh, I have a sermon, you mean Bishop Lawson preached in 1948, talking about her Bible. And Habakkuk couldn't understand why God didn't deal with those people. And the Lord said, wait for it. It shall surely come. And then number three, no. People don't like to hear no from God. Sometimes I know it means just what it says. Sometimes, oh, I just think, oh, I want to marry her. And I want her. And God said, no. And I had one in college like that, and I just thought she was the most wonderful person, and all she disappeared and all. So about 20 years later, I went back to the homecoming, and I said, well, what about Sister uh, 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 Phyllis, uh, I forget her last name now. <laughs> I said, what about her? They said, didn't you know she killed her husband? <laughs> the earth. He that liveth in the secret place of the most high. You wonder why the Trump doesn't bother us? I don't see many black people around the White House. I even said, said no blacks to blame. If you don't see us around there, that's, that's God putting us on here. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord Shall I be afraid when my enemies eat my foes? Can they eat up my flesh? Lord, they stumble. Hallelujah. They stumbled and fell. Hallelujah. In Him will I trust. Hallelujah. So, now the next one is yes, but your faith level isn't up to where you are to receive that blessing. Are you all with me? God wants to see a certain amount of faith. And I always use the illustration of the woman with the issue of blood. Hallelujah. And if you recall, Jesus said, who touched me? And the disciples said, well, all these people around you, how, how do we know Jesus? He said, but I felt the virtue yes. going out of me. Yes. Hallelujah. God had that set up that when she showed enough faith, are y'all with me? It was on automatic. I call it faith, your miracle is on automatic. And, and I use that soda machine over there, you go over there and put a quarter, nothing will happen. You put 50 cents in there, nothing will happen. You put 75. Put 75 in there. You see the illustration? But when you put what is required, if it requires 125, all you do is put it in and touch the button. And down it comes. That's the way it is with your blessing. And you need to bring your faith up to where God says, well, now I know that I know that she needs it. Are y'all with me? I'm trying to be a Bible teacher. And I don't know. <laughs> Quickly, yes, because your answer is already in the Word. And then, no, because many times 
You ask God not for a hard thing, but for such a simple thing. And the Bible says, and he's able to give us above all that we can ask or think. So would you do that for me? Would you take this, duplicate it, take it on your job? You'd be surprised to know. Uh, we have a, a, a telephone prayer line, and my wife uh, started it, and I'm telling you, we got more people on there, and we have it, so, and, and I, I, I believe in short sermon. I'll get two minutes at the end. <laughs> I get a chance to pray. But you, you, we need to get where we need the messages not have to be long. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yeah. I got to preach it. I just can't preach in 10 minutes. Well, you won't be preaching here. <laughs> I don't mean to be mean. <laughs> but you can bring it down in concise. That's right. The message is the message. Yeah. All right. All right, we're ready to go to prophecy. All right, let's yeah. give God a praise. Yeah. I'm going to go kind of quickly on this subject. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. And uh, I'm going to be to the right. They say when you present, you should be to the left. Because people read from left to right. You don't get, get up there where they're looking at you. <laughs> uh, some preachers have a tie that it says, look at me instead of the God in me. Yes, that's right. Okay. And I always loved that about Bishop Bonner, that modesty. Jesus. One time, Deacon Duke gave him a new car and gave him the keys. And he rode around home, he said, for that two hours, had a moon roof. That was when the moon. Mm -hmm. He rode, oh, he just enjoyed it. And finally he came back and he can do the keys. Yeah. He said, but we brought you this for you, Pastor. He said, but I know Bonner. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let a car get so, no. you, know, you got to watch out the, the, the window of the church and see if somebody's breaking in. <laughs> that won't happen. All right, I'm going to go quickly. So, you all know Heroes. We all need heroes. We need mentors. Yes, we do. And that turns into inspirations. I mean, I could give you a message almost Mr. Anderson spoke down in Trinidad. Be who you are. Yes. We were going through a time when some of the women speakers, they were missionary speakers, but they were I'm gonna get a little rough. She said, wear your lace. <laughs> Wear your femininity. Are y'all with me? Yes. Got the same message. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that just like it was yesterday. I was here the night Bishop Lawson got up and he said, Take not away from the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. but add thou to it. See, that was on a February in 1948. And so we have come. And I'm going to go quickly. I'm going to give. Let's give her a hand. Amen. She gave me, and you can go on YouTube and hear Bishop Lawson's sermon yes. on uh, Russia and prophecy. Are you with me? Yes. I was supposed to speak on that last year. But you go on YouTube, and we want to give honor to her who served this institution. Let's give her a round of applause. Professor Gill goes up, and he takes tapes, I send him Bishop Lawson and all, he goes up to the nursing home. Next. Okay. Everyone quotes this scripture, but it's true. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. We all know also that in the last days, what? Just this week alone, stock market went down. Just this week alone, Crazy man was appointed as the security director. I'm going to get to him in a minute. <laughs> Just this week, President fired all those people. Perilous times shall come. For men shall be what? Lovers Love of themselves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient, parents. Unthankful and unholy. 
And same time I'm showing this picture up there, you all know Donald Trump. But when you see him, I try to teach the saints to pray for him. Yes. Are you all with me? Yes. If he hits the wrong button, we all, the whole earth is blown up. And he's got that impulse. He gets mad. And he goes into tantrums. And only your prayers. Are y'all with me? So you need to pray for him. But when I see him, and my mother would say this, my mother said, that's the devil on two feet. <laughs> because he epitomizes so much of what we've been taught in the scriptures. Are you with me? And I've used him, and I'm not making fun of him. I'm trying to show you that God showed us. I never thought he could be as powerful as he is. And he's getting away with things that, I mean, tomorrow, amen, tomorrow he got the... Yeah, yeah, tomorrow he got the uh, what is her name? Tommy. Tommy Weather. And I'm not, I'm not laughing. They're looking at the Russian situation, but God will come down and bring them on down. Hallelujah! And he's so proud. Yes, yes. He is so boastful. Yes. And he is so, amen, sure, I, I, I can fix it by myself. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm going to talk about my sister. Let's go to the pastor, Rob. I want to, this right, tell me when I'm pulling my foot. But now, we, you know about that, the half a million people. 1944, right outside this great refuge temple, they walked from 133rd Street to Greater Refuge Temple. And you see Bishop Lawson, he's not taking glory from himself. He's not holding a sign, amen, about the guns. He's talking about Jesus. And look at all these signs. Follow me, and I'll make you fishes of men. This is our heritage, saints. This is where we came from. The, all these people pray for us. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And, 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 and so, Mr. Lawson had a good, deep sense of focus on prophecy. Mm -hmm. And I have a tape or a CD that I want all of you to have on give to the Bible Institute so you can go out and get a copy so we can raise some more few dollars. But it's him <laughs> talking about prophecy. Come on, Robert, we're going to sir. And he is our founder. And I don't ever want you to forget what he taught us all. When he was one of 50 of the top ministers in the country, and they labeled by Ebony Magazine, black preachers in the country, the reporter asked him, what do you attribute your success to? And he says, Robert, finding the will of God, getting in the will of God, and this one, Standing in the will of God. Hallelujah. And I found that when you're in the will of God, nothing bothers you. Yeah, I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. When you're in the will of God, nothing stops the will of God. When you are part of the will of God, nothing stops you because you're in the will of God. And you got to see it that way. And so I'm going to move as fast as I can. <laughs> so, 1960, you don't, many of you don't realize how historic this place is. The premier of Russia came across the street to the Teresa Hotel. Fidel Castro and the Teresa Hotel was the only hotel that anyone would let Castro and his people stay. And so, Nikita Khrushchev came up from downtown, and Bishop Lawson had a chair sitting right over here looking at the whole thing. And he knew the prophecy of Russia. And then you talk about Bishop Lawson, the founder of this church, the founder of this organization. Here he is, he was in civil rights too because there were two marches on Washington. One was in 1957, uh, the other was in 63. I have a dream speak. But 57, Bishop Lawson. And who was this? 
Dr. Martin Luther King, Abernathy. They go, they go, Adam Powell. Are y'all with me? I mean, he was right in the midst of the social problems. Because many homeless preachers, they didn't want to be bothered with civil rights. But we're living in that time now that the next great event is the rapture. We're in the last days. I love my charts. But amen, charts help you understand. And we've been to the day of Pentecost and we've benefited from the day of Pentecost. And we've been through all these periods. Now, the trump shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we that are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. There are going to be cemeteries around here look like twist cheese. <laughs> Amen. Hole just coming up. Some coming up from New York. Some coming up from California. Some coming up from all over. And we will meet him in the air. Hallelujah. He's not sending somebody. The Lord himself shall ascend with a shout and the voice of an archangel. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We that are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the air. And then we will go through the rapture, the judgment seat, and the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then on, after the great tribulation, the Lord shall return in after the battle of Armageddon, he shall come and we shall come with him. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. And, amen, you ought to read Revelation, amen, 19, 19 chapter, verse that? Yeah. I saw heaven open. Yeah. I can quote it. I saw heaven open and he that sat upon the throne and, the, and those that followed him in linen, Whenever the Bible speaks of linen, with linen is talking about the saints. Amen. And we're going to ride uh, with him, behind him, amen, on, go back one, on our horses. And I tell you, one sister told me, tell me I can't ride a horse. You're going to ride a horse that day. <laughs> You're going to ride. So, let's go back to Timothy. Without natural affection, we don't need to go into all of them. The debauchery uh, that's going on. And, and Dean Wright and Dean Moore talked about false accusers. Amen. Accuse Obama of everything. Yeah. I said one time I had some people fall down laughing. But on, on, on Trump's tomb, 100 years from now, it's going to say, It was Obama's fault. <laughs> Blame Obama for everything. It's true. And, and, and now, He's going to add a new phrase on there. Yeah. Not, uh, what was that? He's not, you know, the, the uh, no, no indulgence with Russia. What, what word am I looking for? Collusion. No collusion. We're going to have that up here. No High-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And that's the one, go back one bar. This is the big one. Having a form of God in this. I'm going to talk about the evangelicals in a minute. All you evangelicals talk about, it's all right for him to commit adultery. It's all right for him. And all he spoke, you better stop the word of God. It's very clear. And the Corinthian Apostle Paul, they asked him, said, well, these people? He said, no, not anyone who practices all these things shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So having a form, I'm going to get to that in a minute. So Bishop Lawson, amen, uh, was called the cry loud, spare not preach. And I wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't say anything unless I also give honor to this man. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And how he had a vision. He was a genius. He didn't get past a lot of the education that we've had. But he was a genius. And I traveled with him in Ethiopia and Africa and all over. He knew what he was doing. And most of all, he was a prayer warrior. And he said, Bob, I can get more done on my face and knees in an hour than working a whole week fooling with people. 
Praise the Lord. Yes. And, and he would make things. When they told him, you can't beat dumb. He put it, there was a dome supposed to be in this church. You will never do it. The dome is there. Yes, it is. And I could go on about his life. And then I want to give honor to our presiding apostle now, Mr. David I. Clark Jr. Let's say that. Amen. And the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's where we are. I'm going to move a lot fast. Now, we must finish, saints. Mm -hmm. We're required in this race. You in a race. Come on, I don't want to race. You race. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are vessels. And we are have to carry something. Are y'all with me? Yeah. You know, you don't, get a, 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 you don't get a saucer, amen, to have a bowl of soup. No. Amen. It's got to be shaped. And God has brought you up out of the clay. Some of us higher vessels than others because we have to carry more than others. So some of us are carrying too much. And what the scripture said, wherefore seeing also we have compassion about with so great a witness, a, a, a greater cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside. Are y'all with me? You mad at somebody? You hold a grudge from 20 years ago. And that's why you can't get to where God wants you to be for that blessing. Hallelujah. You're carrying too much. And I'm motivated by the Special Olympics. Uh, uh, Maurice Shriver's mother, the sister of John F. Kennedy, started a group called the Special Olympics. And she had races set up for those who were handicapped, those with one leg, those were in the wheelchair, and they would race. And so they had a race, and they were coming around for the last lap. And someone looked back, and they saw one or two of their group down. They stopped, they went back, picked up the one. And then when they got to the finishing line, they all stepped across together. That's what we have to do. You're not going to have any bigger crown than anybody else. We got to do this thing together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. God's not going to call you ahead of somebody else. We're all going up together. Praise the Lord. I don't want to move much faster. So we carry too, too many weights. Go back. Some of us are carrying. Amen. All these baggage we carry. And envies. Jealousies. Amen. And, 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 and fear. You get more talked about. Discouraged, grudges, grievous, pride, carrying those things. Amen. Whispers. Somebody comes in too and whispers in your ear. And see, I'm here to tell you, sooner or later, saints, the devil's going to make an attempt to break in to your spiritual life. <laughs> he may not come through the front door, but he's coming around the side. And you know when they want to steal? Yeah. Amen. They don't want to be seen. They want to come through the side window and break into your spiritual life. And they want to get in. He doesn't want to be seen. And he wants to move in darkness. And the Bible speaks about how the devil can. But it is important to know the word of God. It is important to be shielded by the word of God. Amen. The Lord God is my son and shield. He giveth grace and glory. And no good thing will he withhold from them that walk up right. I may not know too much physics and astrotheology and all, but I know the little few. I know the word. <laughs> I eat, drink, and sleep the word of God. And Mr. Wright tell you the same thing. We have the same diet just like you. We eat the word of God, and you are what you eat. <laughs> I know you don't want to hear that, <laughs> but if you eat holiness, you won't be holy. Amen. Next. So, amen. A lot of us get concerned because there are many battlefields. There's the battlefield of the mind. Are y'all with me? Yes. Then there's the battlefield of the world. The battlefield of the church. Oh, yeah. You got to fight some battles in church. And the battlefield is the biggest one of the flesh. But there's one where we went on all. 
that when you're in the spirit, hallelujah, there, therefore now is no condemnation to them who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We are taught to fear not and be not dismayed at this great multitude because the Lord is the Lord's battle, not ours. When you read 20th chapter, 2 Corinthians, amen, Jehoshaphat, I love Jehoshaphat. Read that. Amen. They say you're surrounded by an army. And he called a fast. Are y'all with me? And he began to pray. And when they went out and the, and the uh, prophet came to him, so you not, will not need to fight. You will not need to fight. But go ye out. And Jehoshaphat went out, set up a choir, and prayed singing. And on the front line, they were praising people. And that praise cause the enemy to fight each other. That's right. Hallelujah. God will get your enemies fighting each other. Are you with me? I've seen it happen over and over again. So stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord every time. You can go through every storm, be like this man. All this storm and up here, but he's got peace. That will keep in perfect peace. Fruit mine. It's fade on day. So I love this scripture. And Bishop Bonnie used to quote the scripture a lot. So on the battlefield of victory, when you're in the spirit, read this together. Every place, are y'all with me? Yes. Every place where on the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah from the wilderness in Lebanon, from the river, from the Euphrates, even on the uttermost sea shall be in coast you. Next. So, we have heroes and we have helpers. And uh, there's no condemnation so that we, as Bishop Wright gave us this scripture this morning, be careful for nothing. What? Yes. And don't be an oh, anxiety, no anxious, no upset. But with everything, by prayer and what? Let your requests be known unto God. And what? And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind. He give us not the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. And when you have the mind of Christ, when Trump comes up with all his falsehoods, and all his untruth, you know that's not of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to move a whole lot faster now. So, amen. Nebuchadnezzar, great power in the, he was the king of Babylon. Oh, he had the, he was control of the whole world. And he built this. And he began to brag like Trump. And the king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for that? for the house of the kingdom by my might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. That's what he said. Now look at the next verse. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. And so the next thing we do Nebuchadnezzar was down on the ground eating grass and crawling. And just like God brought Nebuchadnezzar down, he's going to bring Trump down too. Hallelujah. And they shall drive thee from men, and they shall, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. And seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomever he will. Are y'all with me? Yes. Nothing like the word of God. So we get cuckoo birds like that. This man is crazy. He wants to bomb North Korea. He wants to bomb uh, Iran. He's smart. Now Trump could never be the Antichrist. You know why? Because he's not smart at that. The Bible tells us that the Antichrist will be 
a genius. And he will be a Jew. Are you with me? He will be a Jew. And the Jews will embrace him. And I know you all know this, Mr. Wright, taught, all of us taught it. And uh, here the man had no respect for women. And when you see someone, my mother used to say, she used to say, a liar has to have a good memory. Mm, yes. <laughs> about that. Yes. He can't remember what he said this morning. <laughs> or even today. And then last week, he was going up on the plane, and he had an umbrella over his head and left his wife and his son out in the rain and they were coming up. That's it all the time. Thinking about himself. And leaving her. God's going to bring him down just like never to He's going to bring him down. I used to hang out with Bishop Lawson. Amen. Up in Peace Kills and Anderson. All of us were up there with him. Amen. And it was a great thing. So the Lord despises a proud look. Party eyes, lying tongue. Mm -hmm. Look, that's what it says. Six things that the Lord hates: a proud look and a lying tongue. Hallelujah! And hands that shed innocent blood. False witness. The Lord hates these things, and we are witnessing it now. But we've been declared what? Not guilty. Not guilty. And Bishop Lawson taught us. Who traveled to Israel 39 times. Amen. What all these symbols mean. And if we have more time, we could talk about it. But we are heirs of Abraham. And you read Galatians 3, 25 to 27. We are heirs according to the promise. In other words, the Jews don't have anything over you. If you have been baptized in Christ, you are heirs according to the promise. So as we come to a conclusion here, the Lord has given us a, a whole lot of good signs, a whole lot of direction, a whole lot of history. I have to go uh, faster. And he has given us through his stenographer. Remember, all the men, 40 men of God, they were stenographers. They didn't write on their own. And you can't tell me that Isaiah I must, I must be getting old because I got sick. <laughs> you can't tell me that Isaiah just thought up for unto us a child is born. 600 years before Christ. For unto us what? And the government shall be upon the show. And thou shalt call him what? Wonderful. Counselor. The you made that little baby? The mighty God. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Now you want to talk to a Jewish person about Jesus. That's the scripture you give. And then he will he will come to he will come to Amen. And so in Bishop Bonner's book, The Battle of Armageddon, talks about Israel shall be attacked from the north. Now we call him in the Bible, Bishop Lawson speaks about God, Magor. Mm -hmm. And he shall come in the north. There's a problem there in Russia because they need gas. It's not oil. They need gas. So they're going to come down into Israel in the Middle East. And that's where we're going to see the emergence of the Battle of Armageddon. And of course, uh, Bishop Lawson taught us about Narcissus. You know, people who want to make themselves great. And uh, there's another bird over there uh, talking about, and he's controlling the Congress, the NRA. And today, those children are marching because that man on the right is dealing with an industry of guns. And then, amen, the man put his hand on the Bible. Amen. That's because a form of godliness. But denying what? The power there. Is nobody but the devil. Is nobody but sin. And so Narcissus. And Bishop Lawson told us the story of Narcissus. He he looked at himself every day in the mirror. Next. And he looked at the water rather. And he was so beautiful. And he just thought he was so beautiful. And he looked and stared at himself. And one day he looked at himself and fell into the water and drowned. <laughs> 
In a spiritual sense, that's what's going to happen with Trump. Amen. Pride will cost you everything and will leave you with nothing. And it's not, not, it's not narcissism, uh, narcissus, or narcissism, it is what? The devil. The same bird is around and he blinds. Are y'all with me? The minds of people. And the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light and glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. But we preach not ourselves, but what? Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, amen. And we know that in Ezekiel, we know that in the book of Isaiah, the devil rose up and called himself, he had eye trouble, and he would be as the most high God. And God had to cast him down like a dirty rag. You see all those eyes? I will exalt my throne above the star. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most like God, thy God. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. That's the word of God. And he surely was brought down, and so all his stuff, he's a liar, he's a murderer, he, he sows discord, he's got trickery, he's, he's got adversities, he, he's just totally wicked. He's cowardly. He's a thief. Many times Trump won't come out there and make the announcement himself. He sends someone else. And don't let him say that you're doing a good job. That means you won't be there next week. <laughs> Without principles. Deceitful. Fierce. Hallelujah. And the Lord warns us about these people. And he's there just thinks that this man is the greatest thing Putin. And here's a man who doesn't believe in God. And our president is there talking and lifting him up. And so, but God, they go one of my seven, but God, who is rich in mercy, keeps us under the shelter. He's a shelter in the time of storm. I know you don't see any black people in the White House. That's God keeping us away from all that. If he offered me a job to march, I'm sorry. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going, I'm going to keep my spiritual mind. I'm going to watch. Sister said, you hear what she said? Let's so read it together. Watch and pray. May he enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So we need to know our enemies. We need to know we're surrounded by enemies. Yeah. This man at the top said, told the Europeans last week, wear your racism with pride. Yeah. He's a bigot. Yeah. And one time, and one time somebody tried to impress Bishop Lawson, and then and he said, You look, Lawson, I think you got a little bit of white blood in you. <laughs> and Bishop Lawson said, Oh yeah. He said, I thought all blood was red. <laughs> to sow a web and God just untangled it. And he's going to jail too. So he sees himself above God. The Bible said a way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkened unto the counsel is what? You gotta seek God. Lean not unto thy own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. And long as I sit down and listen to God, and you listen to God, you're going forward. Amen. And so even uh, Ben Carson told me, and he lost the vote out there in the West, but he said he didn't believe in the rapture. That's it for him. <laughs> and he's going to go out. White bought a, bought a dining room set, I think, for the 45,000. And it won't be long before we be, be fairly well. <laughs> And, as he's the only black in the cabinet. There's no, no others. 
But there are no blacks to blame. That's a blessing. <laughs> so, so the scripture said, go against God. That's, that's Russia. Oh God. The Lord said he would put, amen, and I want to finish up. This man, the son of the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, he's an atheist. He said he's not, he's not worried about going to hell. And that's a fool. That's a fool. And then, uh, Saints, I just want to give you a few warnings here. Oh, how much do I have? Yeah? Oh. <laughs> give you a few warnings. I'm going to get controversial. You need to get some security for me because I'm going to say a couple of controversial things. Bro, you used to be a program on Sunday, the Sunday best. Am I right? And y'all would be so happy. Woo, I'm just happy. And there would be competing to who was the best. Now when you sing, I don't care if you can't carry a tune inside a barrel. If it's for the glory of God, he's lifted up. Are y'all with me? Now remember that sister I told you about before, she has tongue tied. He said, I'm, I'm going on with Jesus, that's the same. I'm going on with Jesus, that's the same. I may be tongue tied, can't talk pain, but I'm going on with Jesus, just the same. And God is just as lifted up with that. Coming from the heart. So when you see on television, battle of song, they're battling against each other. When we're supposed to be and using the word of God and praises of God to compete with each other. We ought to be doing and praising God. You notice it's not on anymore. Amen. Somebody pray to God. All right? Did you write and get my helmet and also to security let me out? <laughs> if you notice, and there may be people here, these tattoos on the body. This body was made. The prophet Jeremiah the Lord said, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. The scripture said, for whom he did predestinate, he called. And whom he called, he justified. And whom he justified, he glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? The Bible says in Ephesians 2 10, we are his workmanship, yeah. created by Christ Jesus unto good works, which he had before ordained. And so your conception did not start in your mother's womb. Your conception started in God's mind Hallelujah. that you should come. Are you with me? Yeah. And what we're doing now, this body, and Stannis and I, we had a counsel on this because we're familiar with another case that happened too, uh, which is the other thing is cremation. Right. Now God made this. <laughs> dust, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, but that's still God. Right. This is this machine. When you study physiology and biology, you start shouting all over the place. All the systems your cranial system, your digestive system, all the system, God put together a machine and he put together a mind that can hold two million pieces of information at the same time. He put together a, a machine, a heart that'll beat a hundred and some years. Are y'all with me? And he made that magnificent machine for his glory. Not for you putting eagles and devils all over your body. Amen. Amen. Now, I deal with 14,000 college students every day, and it's pitiful. Yes. So what is your major? Business? Well, I hope you're going to cover yourself up. <laughs> this body is to be honored. Yes. And those with the Holy Ghost, even those without the Holy Ghost, God made this body for the Holy Ghost. The body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it should not be defiled. I haven't told you anything here is not the word of God saying. 
I don't deal with philosophy. No. I deal with the word. And never argue the Quran or anything else with anybody else. If they can't use the Bible as the frame of reference, then you don't need a debate with them. Are you, are you with me? The word of God. And even I told a Jewish friend of mine, and I said, did you know most married Ethiopian women? Oh, no, that can't be. Can you get me your, can you get me your Bible? Can you get me your Old Testament? That's right. And most married with men, married an Ethiopian woman. So truth is truth. And the Bible says you shall know the truth. So, find in my final comments, saints, these are the last days. We don't have time. I'm going to give you this chart. Uh, we'll give you this chart. I left. If you didn't get a copy of this handout, uh, the originals I gave to Sister Wright, you can go to the office next. Uh, and I'm going to kind of next. Yeah. And I'm going to close out. I, you can tell I enjoy this. Yeah. I know I'm getting old. Have to sit down. <laughs> but you need to take this day. Not just Bob Spelman, or Mother Dr. Anderson, or Bishop Charles Wright, or De Deacon Moore. You need to settle in your mind. This is food. And it feeds your soul and your mind and your spirit. I mean that down. Let's give him a hand back there in the kitchen. But the word of God feeds you. Hallelujah. And like the camel, amen. He, he eats, and two weeks later, he's still eating off what he ate two weeks before. And we're still eating off. Or, or my boys Robert and Ryan saw, hey amen, the cow chewing the cud. You know how they bring it up? And then they read that, they say, bring it up. And they saw him, they were little saying, he chews a lot of gum, Pop Daddy. <laughs> what they do is bring it up. And regurgitate him, bring it up. That's where the word of God is. Then after a while, it becomes part of him. Are y'all with me? Yes. Yes. So look on the internet. I have a few here, but I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be asking for a little offering uh, in the weeks to come. I'm um, doing uh, DVD teaching and uh, you will enjoy it. The same type that we had this afternoon. Did y'all get anything out of this? Yeah. Uh, there's one I really wish you could all have is uh, when praise is most difficult, that's when it's most necessary. Are you all hear me? When you lose somebody, you know it's hard. When you lost that job, when you didn't get that blessing, when praise is most difficult, that's when it's most necessary. I'll be putting that on the internet but I'll be making it available to you. God bless you, Brother Christopher. Thank you. Real, real.
Thank you.